What's up, folks? This is Matt Barlow from Ashes of Ares. This is Brittany Slays from Unleash the Archers. This is Dale from Endemize. This is Vicky Sarakis from The Agonist. Hey, this is Steve from 200 Stab Wounds, and you're listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Check it out. Metalheads to another episode of the Great Metal Debate Podcast. I'm Xander, and I'm sitting here with Bill from Decrepit Birth. So how's the tour been so far with Vader and Chris Young? So far, so good. Can't complain with uh, touring with uh, two fucking great acts like that. Fuck great yeah. acts. Uh, what's the biggest band you've ever opened for? I don't know. Uh, I never pay attention to that kind of stuff. I, if they were big, I wouldn't even know. I'm out of the loop. I wouldn't know. We've never played for, with anyone like Slayer, so it's all just may, maybe like suffocation type of uh, that that level of bands. I, I know that you did vocals for Suffocation one time. Yeah. Uh, that was a pretty killer show. Yeah, um, that was good. Zier, uh, what was it like for you? I mean, I know that must have been a high honor. Yeah, um, I was a nervous wreck at first. Uh, I'm really a uh, vocal and can't shut up. I get amped, and uh, those guys were like, man, it's the quietest I've ever seen you, and I'm like, fuck, I'm a nervous wreck. They didn't want to... Um, rehearse and I was like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> it's like we gotta rehearse it's like they're, oh we're gonna have to cancel rehearsal tonight uh, and it was uh yeah but once got on stage uh, I think the first time was uh, Belarus I was like fuck yeah this is fucking insane I was stoked that was really good okay um, if you could open up for any band which one would it be shit I don't know uh, sorry, I just got my bell rung on stage tonight. Uh, my, I can't even think of so, okay. so many good bands that uh, we'd like to open up for. So uh, let's keep it at that. Yeah, by the way, I like how you uh, jumped in the pit with everybody. That was pretty insane. I, I know that's not the first time you've done that because this is the fourth time I've seen you. Do you play any instruments besides doing vocals? Um, not really. I, I have a punk, couple punk projects and I write the guitars for them, but it's like I, I couldn't play it tight on you know stage i'm not that good i just uh I, I record the scratch tracks so that my guitar player can learn my songs okay you know and then he takes it from there and does the real recording in the live shows so uh what made you want to become a vocalist i don't know i just uh when i was a kid playing punk the it just wasn't uh the right vocal style for me it was like a lot of the bands were whiny and I uh, just didn't feel that. And I wasn't good enough, I felt, to play guitar. And then I, uh, yeah, my sister turned me on to Rain and Blood. And I definitely can't do those highs. I wouldn't want to. I mean, I'd be sick if I could, but I can't. Um, and from there, I just started looking for different um, cassettes back then. And uh, came across Effigy of the Forgotten and was like, damn, I think I could do that. that it just intrigued me. And so, yeah, I took it from there. Okay. Um, do you do any uh, vocal warm-ups before you get on stage? No, I used to smoke a lot of weed, but uh, obviously I haven't smoked for eight years, so that didn't really warm me up. But, yeah, no, no. I actually just quit smoking pot like about a, a year and a half ago, but I did, like, last summer, smoke with Maleva and Creation. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm not against it. I just... Uh, yeah, I just took a break and never started again, you know. So I did that a lot, but... Same. My, my brother kind of took over <laughs> the pothead days, so... Um, it's not really a question, but um, i, I got to say, I love how you did the Once Upon the Cross uh, cover on oh, stage. fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Matt always comes up with a, a good good song to cover from various old school bands, and uh, fuck yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a fucking really good one. Are, are you the one who writes the lyrics for uh, this band? Um, 95 or so percent of them, yeah, Matt will, Matt will come up with some lyrics here and there, and then through the time, through the years, it's hard to remember if I wrote it or Matt, because our, our uh, mindset's similar as far as the mysticism aspect. Okay, uh, so where do you get your inspiration from? I don't know, uh, life. Uh, so, back, I think it was like 13 years ago when I was a senior in high school, I was dating this one girl, and she dumped me right before prom yep. so my prom night 
uh, <laughs> was me sitting in my room playing video games, but I would keep the television on mute, and one of the CDs I remember listening to was the Diminishing Between Worlds album. That's a good one. Yeah, so I, I was uh, listening to that album, uh, and, uh, and of course I was playing, uh, I think I was playing Resistance 3 on the PS3, that was a, a good game back then. I don't know, do you play any video games at all? No. No? Okay. Uh, so, uh, what is the most embarrassing moment you've ever had on stage? I don't know. Uh, just, you know, fucking up a part that I shouldn't fuck up, which happens probably throughout various tours. You know, I'm just like, I can't believe I stood there. You know, I mean, otherwise, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been embarrassed uh, in, uh, what was that, Roseland or whatever, Oregon or Roseburg, I forget, where I just uh, got way too shit based. And I could be embarrassed about it after the fact. I was so fucked up, I didn't even know at the time. It's like, I had, we finished playing door, uh, The Living Doorway, and I, I turned to Matt and went, did we forget to do The Living Doorway? <laughs> yeah, that's honestly one of my favorite songs. I know you guys yeah. play that uh, just now, but I, I love the guitar riff of that. I love the way it sounds. You know, it's a killer opening track to that album. And I, I recently got the Diminishing Between Worlds hoodie from Indie Merch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, do you have any hobbies outside of band practice? Uh, band practice really only happens before we go on tour, so my whole life would be a hobby then because we all live so far apart that we don't really practice. We get together before a tour and do like three or four days of just cramming. And uh, but yeah, my life is a hobby. That's all I I can say. People should be so fortunate. Okay, that's cool. Out of all the countries that you've been to, which one was your favorite outside of the United States? Uh, man. I don't know. I mean, there's so many fucking good ones. It's all, it's, I, I, there's no favorite. They're all incredible in their own way. And the food and all of them are, that's what makes it. And there's, there's no competition. The food everywhere is unbelievable. And uh, the people are awesome. That's all I can say. Uh, I mean, I can't think there's any that I would say I like least. So uh, all of them, I, I, I might sound stupid, but that's the honest truth. Everywhere we go, it's incredible. Yeah, uh, I know that food in other countries. You know, I'll say this: something with, special about with, with suffocation. Know. I got to go to Russia, and the stupid, fucking, goddamn, buttfuck politicians that run this fucking planet might have fucked that up for the future. I don't know, but uh, I actually got to go to Russia, and I don't know about the politicians. They're all a bunch of fucking cocksuckers everywhere you go, <laughs> but the people in Russia were fucking beautiful. And I'm really happy that I got to go there and meet the people, you know. Uh, getting choked up thinking about it, because I'm really a deep person. And uh, it's really a pity that um, the world leaders have to fuck our lives up and uh, turn us against each other in our mindsets, because that's a bunch of fucking, it's a crock of shit. Exactly. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And, and I bet that most of Russia probably is a bunch of nice people. And, oh, and yeah. they were beautiful, beautiful. I mean... The average person might look at us walking down the street like, oh, fucking weirdos. But the, the scene, the people who we are, metalheads, punk rock, whatever, fuck, in fucking credible. The nicest, nicest fucking people. Insane. Yeah, uh, they say metalheads are just one giant family. That's what it is. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're going to have to start wrapping this interview up here pretty soon. Is there any country that you would like to tour that you haven't been to already? Many. Yeah, too many. I mean, I could just talk before you, the interview would be done. I'd still be talking. Okay. Uh, definitely love to get down to Mexico, Central America, South America, um, whole Indonesia. All there's so fucking many where death metal crushes what we have in the states. That that's their top forty would be brutal death metal. Yeah, I know that Indonesia. They have a major slam brutal death scene there. Yeah. But I'll uh, see here. I can't wait. Yeah, I know they have some good stuff coming out of there, especially like released through Brutal Mind and Slam World Mind and all those other yeah, uh, yeah. sites, you know, and, uh, record labels. Uh, so you said already earlier in this interview that you haven't smoked pot for eight years, but which country has the best marijuana? Oh, uh, the United States. Oh, okay. Oh, the best country? I'm sorry, California. <laughs> okay. Not the indoor. The indoor, no matter where you go, sucks. <laughs> okay. Fucking bullshit. Is Decrepit Birth currently working on any new material? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're always working on new material. 
Uh, so we can come to expect uh, a new album here pretty soon, released through Nick Bird Blast? Uh, I, can't, I can't say really soon. Uh, the way Matt writes, it's so in-depth that uh, when he finishes a song, he's not finished with it until it's actually recorded. And uh, currently, I'm guessing, probably got three songs that are complete that are still going to evolve. Yeah, and uh, I mean, as soon as the last album came out, like every album, he's like, we're getting right on the next one, but getting right on the next one turns into that song's taking a lot of time because it's evolving the whole time, changing. So he's, he's kind of like a perfectionist and always likes to change it up, tweak um, it a little bit. he's a perfectionist. It's just when it's done, it's done. And I, I don't complain because I'm really stoked on his uh, songwriting. Because I know that there was at least an eight or nine year gap between Polarity and Exodus Mundi. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing is, I actually put both those CDs on pre-order <laughs> before they came out. So uh, you bet your ass I'll definitely put the next one on pre-order whenever I, first time I hear about it, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I didn't know it was that long. I thought it was seven years. but uh, Seven or eight years, give or take, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you, you might be right, because Polarity came out in 2010, and uh, Mundi came out in 2017, I think? 17, yeah. 18, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the last question is, what is the best way for fans to support your band? Come to the shows. Come to the shows. Yes. Buy from the merch tables. Whether they buy from the merch or not, come to the fucking shows. Tell other people about us. Spread the word. You know, it's, uh, yeah, whatever. Let them see how stupid we actually are. Bye. <laughs> All right, well, hey, thank you very much for this interview. It's All been right. a pleasure. Yep. And, of course, I'll see you guys anytime you come through. Okay.